You want to know one thing Donald Trump and I have in common? This. Nobody disagrees by That's President Trump reacting to the release of the Mueller report, which provided a lot of details about, among other things, Trump's efforts to remove Robert Mueller as special counsel and to steeply curtail the scope of Mueller's investigation. For example, Trump's aides refused to listen to him on multiple occasions when he made moves to short circuit said investigation. And this isn't just me reading the tea leaves or between the lines. They literally say that in the report, quote, the president's efforts to influence the investigation were mostly unsuccessful, but that is largely because the persons who surrounded the president declined to carry out orders or accede to his requests, according to the Mueller report. This wasn't just one or two incidents. <laughs> no, no, no. Over the course of his presidency, we've consistently heard stories of the president's aides telling him no, or otherwise protecting him and themselves, from what they determined were his most not good, very bad ideas. Here are 10 of them. Sidebar, you'll be surprised to hear, I'm sure, that most of these aides have moved on to new career opportunities. Good luck with that. Number one, in June 2017, media reports indicated that Mueller was investigating whether President Donald Trump had obstructed justice. So Trump called up White House counsel Don McGahn at home and directed him to get Mueller removed for conflicts of interest. McGahn refused, knowing that it would probably be catastrophic for the president and McGahn if he did that. Later, McGahn also refused to go back on his story that Trump had asked him to remove Mueller. And he also refused to write a letter for the White House with that denial in it. Number two, in May 2018, the New York Times reported that then Attorney General Jeff Sessions refused to unrecuse himself in the Russia investigation. Trump famously said that he wouldn't have hired Sessions in the first place if he knew that Sessions was going to recuse himself. If you could have one do-over as president, what would it be? Well, it would be personnel. Uh, I would it? say if I had one do-over, it would be I would not have appointed Jeff Sessions to be attorney general. Sessions, not for nothing, resigned in November 2018. Number three, former campaign manager Corey Lewandowski refused to tell Sessions to tell Mueller to limit the scope of his inquiry to only future election interference. Number four, FBI Director James Comey said that President Trump in January 2017 asked him to drop the investigation into Michael Flynn. Trump eventually fired Comey, which almost immediately led to Mueller's appointment as special counsel. Number five, earlier this year, then Department of Homeland Security boss Kirsten Nielsen refused to close the southern border after Trump publicly threatened to do so. This came after several instances where Trump went against things Nielsen had said publicly. Now, if that wasn't the last straw, it was certainly among the last straws. Nielsen resigned in April. Number six, Rex Tillerson took learning to say no to New Heights, refusing a litany of Trump's requests during his tenure as Secretary of State. Quote, I'd have to say to him, Mr. President, I understand what you want to do, but you can't do it that way, Tillerson later recounted, adding, it violates the law, end quote. Number seven, former Staff Secretary Rob Porter refused to reach out to Associate Attorney General Rachel Brand to see if she was sufficiently on Team Trump, and if so, would she be interested in overseeing the special counsel investigation? Number eight, in December 2018, Defense Secretary James Mattis refused Trump's exhortation to back the withdrawal of American troops from Syria. Mattis subsequently resigned in protest. Number nine, in June 2017, White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus refused Trump's order to find a way to fire Sessions, instead warning the president that it would prove to be a bigger deal than even Comey's firing had been. Guess when Priebus left? It was the following month. Number 10, KT McFarland, who served a short stint as Deputy National Security Advisor, refused to write a memo making clear that Trump had not told Michael Flynn to discuss sanctions with the Russians prior to coming into office. McFarland didn't know, and she wasn't about to write something just because the president told her to. Guess how long she stuck around? Ha <laughs> ha, trick question. She was presented with this idea after she was fired. Ooh. So, it turns out that when Trump says that no one disobeys his orders, it's just about as true as when I say it. Now for me, most of the disobeying comes when I'm coaching third grade basketball. They just won't listen. For Trump, it says the leader of the free world. So, slightly higher stakes. 
The common thread here, though, is that a grand total of none of the people above who stood up to one of Trump's demands are employed by Trump's White House any longer, which is uh, not a coincidence. Trump has systematically eliminated opposition to even his wildest asks and demands over the past 18 months, prizing unstinting loyalty to him over all other traits when it comes to searching for replacements to these no men and women. The formula to get and keep your job within the Trump administration is now crystal clear. Don't tell the president no, ever. And that is the point. We make these videos a lot. Watch new videos twice a week on Tuesday and Thursday.